Hello out there, welcome to this tutorial on statistics. In this video, we'll be looking at cumulative frequency curve. This is also known as OGIVE. So we have a problem here. The table below shows the scores of 80 students in an examination. Draw the cumulative frequency curve and use it to estimate the median and the semi-interquartile range. So we have the max here giving us a range of values of x. So this means from 0 to 10, 10 inclusive, and then from 10 to 20, this is actually from 11 to 20, from 21 to 30, and so on with their respective uh, frequencies. So what we do now to enable us to draw the cumulative frequency curve is to create another column for cumulative frequency. So we have the column cumulative frequency, so the cumulative frequency for the first class interval here is 5 and that of the second class interval is 5 plus 7 giving us a 12 and the third one will be 12 plus 9 giving 21 it's going to be 21 plus this 13 giving 34 34 plus this 14 gives 48 48 plus 11 gives 59 59 plus 8 gives 67 67 plus 6 gives 73 73 plus 4 gives 77 and finally 77 plus 3 gives 80 so the total here must be the same as the population so we then go ahead to draw the cumulative frequency curve remember it is going to be the upper class interval here that is 0 10 20 30 up till 100 against the cumulative frequency so we have our graph here and the max and the cumulative frequency so we have the x-axis here this x-axis is going to represent the max it is going to be 0 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 80 90 and 100 so this is representing the max and here up we go with 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 80 representing the cumulative frequency so we have the max here and the cumulative frequency here uh, it is always believed that the class before this is zero so the upper class boundary of that class is going to be zero so we have it at the origin here then for 10, the cumulative frequency is 5. So we have it as halfway between 0 and 10, which is marked here. Then for 20, we have it as 12. This is 10, 11, 12. It is marked. For 30, we have it as 21. And then now we have 21 here. For 40, we have it as 34. This is 30, 31, 32, 33, 34. We mark it there. And for 50, we have it at 48. This is four, two lines away from 50, which is at this point. Then for 60, we have it at 59, which is a line before 60. It is marked there. So for 70, we have 67. 67 is three lines away from 70 which is this point 80 we have 73 1 2 3 three lines after 70 90 is 77 three lines away from 80 that's the point and 100 is 80 so we then join these points um we can join with free hand if we do not have French curve. And uh, locally, we can join with broomstick. So joining the points now, we have the cumulative frequency curve for this distribution. So having done this, we are going to use it to calculate the problem given earlier. 
So before then, we are going to divide this axis into percentile axis. So halfway is going to be 50%. Between the first half, we have 25%. Above, this is 75%, then this is 100%. So this will help us to calculate the quartiles and median. So to calculate the median, the median, which is also known as Q2, is 50th percentile. So we go to the percentile axis, get the line of 50, trace it to the curve, and trace it down to the max. So from here, we have 40, 41, 42, 43, 44. So the median is 44%. And then we go for semi interquartile range. Semi interquartile range is interquartile range divided by 2. And our interquartile range is Q3 minus Q1 over 2. So to get our Q3, our Q3 is also known as the upper quartile and it is 75th percentile. So we go to the graph on the percentile axis. You trace the line of 75% to the curve and trace it down to the max. So this is 60, 61. So the Q3, which is 75th percentile, is 61, which is also known as the upper quartile. Then for Q1, which is known as the lower quartile, is 25th percentile. And 25th percentile is obtained from the Percentile axis, go to the 25th percentile line, trace it to the curve, and then down to the max. So, and this is giving us a line away from 30, which gives 29. So, the lower quartile is 29%. We then go ahead to substitute into our semi interquartile range. That's going to give us Q3 61 minus Q1, which is 29 divided by 2. And then this will give us a 16. 16 is the semi interquartile range of this distribution. And this is the end of solution to this problem, as well as end of this tutorial. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like and share this video. Until we come your way again, goodbye.